said, if I don't perm my hair, I have to. Because you're not the only one with that mindset. The sister said, if I don't perm my hair, I look like a nigga. No, we don't have nigga hair, sis. Sis, we have kinky, woolly hair. No, we, we just, sis, so you know what you're showing me right now, sis? That one, don't apologize. What, what you're showing me right now, sis, is that when we read that God has woolly hair, that Christ had woolly hair, that King Solomon and that Job were black men, you're showing me that that went completely over your head, that you don't really believe this Bible. Proverbs 3.31, sis. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. The Bible says, sis, don't envy your oppressor. Who taught you to perm your hair? Me. 2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. comes back, when Christ comes back to redeem us from this captivity, that is the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Read on. That I will punish the princes. That he will do what? I will punish the princes. What? Punish the princes. Punishment from God. Punish to the princes, starting with the man, read. And the king's children. Uh -huh. And all such. All such. Everybody. Read. All such as are clothed with strange apparel. Says. That is strange apparel. So in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, when it comes time for us to be redeemed, if you're wearing those pants and you didn't take heed to the correction from us, God will put you to death. So that's what I don't want to happen to you. You understand? Says you believe in the Bible? I, I, I do, and I do love, I love the Bible, but I love the Quran too. Okay, so you're not sure you're deciding between oh, the Quran or the Bible? The Quran refers us to the Bible because the Quran tells us that God gave us the Bible as well, but some people don't follow. Okay. All right. So you go to church on Sunday? No, 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 no. I, All right. I don't. So now, okay. All right. So how does the Bible teach our woman to dress? The Bible teaches us to dress properly. Okay, okay, let's uh, let's show you First Timothy two. When you you live in Queens, yeah. When you go throughout certain communities, right. you see different cultures. Yeah. The blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans, right. according to the Bible, were the same people okay. and of the same culture. Right. So when you read the laws in the Bible, you're reading about our culture. Okay, yeah. First Timothy chapter two, verse nine. First Timothy chapter two, verse nine. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That's the black woman's culture. Yes. To dress modestly. Yes. For example, you see some Arab woman, when they'll have nothing shown but the eyes. Like yeah. And you know that, that, you see that's their culture. Yes. So now when we're reading the Bible, we're reading about the culture that you're in. Your culture is right here, come on. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair. Braided hair is talking about braids. Right, right. That's how you know this is black woman. Definitely. Come on. Or gold, or pearls, right. or costly right. array. Right. But which becometh women professing godliness. But woman professing godliness. Right. Come on. With good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Yeah. So now, what did the Bible show us? That the women are to dress modestly. Yeah. So you shouldn't be reading the Quran. That's not where you're going to find your culture. Right. Your culture is going to be in this Bible. I, 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 read the Bible. I want to show you something. I've read the Bible more than you have. Okay, there's nothing wrong with reading the Bible 15 times. It's about applying. That's right. It's about applying. That's Bring right. it out. Remember. Look at, look at my, look at my, you see, I have on leggings, but like I'm really You got to have on a dress. 
you gotta have on a dress or a skirt. It's too hot. I'm and guess what? I can't guess what? because my legs are rubbing. No, you can wear a skirt. You decided no, my, not to wear a skirt. My legs rub, Read so that again, verse uh, 11, I verse 9 again. Verse Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest. In what? In modest. In what? In modest. Our women during the 1700s wore dresses and skirts in the winter and still was warm. It's almost 105 degrees today. This is the perfect weather for a dress or a skirt. What are we showing you? We're showing you this is the redemption of our people by keeping God's laws. If we as a community or as a culture want that respect, we got to humble down to what this Bible says. Go to um, Wisdom of Solomon. 13, the author of beauty. The, uh, 13 and 3. The author of beauty. What we want to show you is, listen to this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 3. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty has created them. The Bible says for the first author of beauty. Guess what? God is a black man. Christ is a black man. God is a spirit. He God is, is a black man. God is a black man. God is a spirit. Sister, God is a black man. That's right. Really Let's read it for you, sis. Because guess what? The Bible says you shall. Today is your day. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from the lies. God is a black man with woolly hair. Let's read. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 uh -huh. I beheld till the thrones were cast down Daniel saw all the ruling nations destroyed in a moment of time Read. And the ancient of days did sit Who is the ancient of days? Who is the ancient of days? I can't answer that question God is the ancient of days Read that part of Daniel And the ancient of days did sit The ancient of days did sit In order for me to sit I need a body, I need legs, and I need knees to bend, I need a back to sit upright on the chair. You need a body, you need a butt to sit on. The Ancient of Days did sit, read on, whose garment was white as snow. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can a spirit wear a garment? Read that part again. Whose garment was white as snow. So, so far we've conquered two things. The Bible said what? That the Ancient of Days, talking about the Most High God, sat. That's right. God sat down and guess what? Daniel in this vision saw that God had on a garment. So in order for you to wear a garment, you need a body. God has a body that he sat down with and when he sat down he had on a garment. Read on. And the hair of his head, this so-called spirit that a lot of our people say had hair on his head. So, so far, the Bible said that God, the Ancient of Days, had a body to sit down with, that he had a body to wear a garment, and on the top of his head, he had hair. What type, hold on, sis, what type of hair? Read. Uh -oh. Like the pure wool, like the pure wool, like the pure wool, like the pure wool. God has woolly hair. God is a black man. Sister, the truth will set you free. God's laws will set you free. But you have to apply them first. If you hear all of this and you leave and you don't do what the Bible says, you're going to be confused all over again. My brother, you understand that God has woolly hair like you? You understand that? What color is Jesus? Black. He's black, right? Let's show. Hold on, sis. Hold on, sis. Come on back. Come on back. So, so far, we've read about who? We've read about the description of God. Now, let's read about the description of his son. Give me Daniel 10 and 6. Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. We're going to stay in the same book because the Most High dealt with Daniel and he showed him many different things. Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. His body also was like the barrel. This is talking about Jesus Christ. It says his body also was like the barrel. Talking about what? That he had on a green garment, like you see there in the picture. Barrel is green, read on. And his face as the appearance of lightning. And his face as the appearance of lightning, meaning it shined, read on. And his eyes as lamps of fire. 
And his arms and his feet. His arms and his feet. What color were they? Read. Like in color. Like in what? Like in color. So who said that the Bible didn't talk about color? Who said that the Bible didn't talk about nationality? Right. They're a damn lie. The Bible says that his arms and his feet. Read. Like in color. Come on, bro. Don't go nowhere, bro. This is for you as well. What's your name? Michael. What's your name, sis? Diane. I'm Gamaliel. So Michael and Diane, where first we read about the description of God, that he was had white, had, that he had woolly hair. Now we're reading about his son. So now, what does the Bible say about Christ's arms and his feet? Read. Like in color to, to polish brass. Like in color to polish brass. So now, what color is brass? What color is a penny? It's brown, just like our faces. We come in different shades of brown. So the Bible says that his arms and his feet were light in color to polished brass. You understand? This is talking about the description of Jesus the Christ. So now, we've read about God. We've read about his son and what they look like. Now let's read about the people of the book. Now let's go to Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. You ever heard about King Solomon in the Bible? The, the richest, most wisest king ever to walk the face of the earth? Yes, but he was a black man. That's the point that we're focusing on. The Bible talks about our forefathers and it gives the description on the Greek. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black, but comely. King Solomon said what? of the Most High God, and he's the author of beauty. So for our sisters that uh, uh, dye their hair, that relax their hair, sis, you're only showing that you hate your actual self. God made you with that woolly hair. You understand that, bro? You shaving off your beard only shows that you hate yourself. Why? Because Christ had a beard. We look like little boys when we shave off our beards. God commands the men to have beards. God also commands the sisters to wear a dress because you're royalty. But when you walk on like that, it puts a particular spirit on you. Let's deal with that. No, as a matter of fact, hold on. Before we go to that, let's read about some more of our forefathers. Let's read about some more color scriptures because there's more than just those. All praises, but there's more. There's more, sis. Don't you want to know this history? It's a rich history. Let's get it. Job chapter 30, verse 30. Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. My skin, my skin is black upon me. More color scriptures in the Bible. So this is not talking about all nations. The Bible was written by the Israelites, to the Israelites, for the Israelites. This is what the Bible, this is the message of the gospel. This is that good news. The truth shall set our people free. What is the truth? God's laws. Once we understand that we must keep God's laws and repent of our sins, then at that point we can make changes. Until then we're never going to get respect, sis. So now, what are you going to do? I'm going to wear a dress over my leg. Okay, oh. in 105 degree weather? No. You could wear a regular dress, sis. That's all right. No, I was trying to tell you earlier. My cousins actually rub together. Okay. Like, can I just wear a All right, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Right. That's cool. So uh, you understand, sis, that you have to wear a dress? I do understand that now. Okay, great. So now, as far as your hair? All right, my hair is long. You have to wear But well, sis, okay. But let your hair grow. That only shows God that you actually have respect for how he made you in the beginning. What? You understand? I can't turn my hair. No, Proverbs 331. I look like a nigger. You, you hear what you just said, sis? Really hold, hold on, hold on. Let's deal with that. Let's, hold on, sis. Sis. The sister said, if I don't perm my hair, I have to. Because 
because you're not the only one with that mindset. The sister said, if I don't perm my hair, I look like a nigger. I have nigger hair, I said. No, we don't have nigger hair, sis. Sis, we have kinky, woolly hair. We, we just, sis, so you know what you're showing me right now, sis? That one. Don't apologize. What, what you're showing me right now, sis, is that when we read that God has woolly hair, that Christ had woolly hair, that King Solomon and that Job were black men, you're showing me that that went completely over your head, that you don't really believe this Bible. Uh, no, I mean, where, where in the Quran does it tell you to wear your natural hair? Where in the Quran does it say, don't envy your oppressors? Where in the Quran does it say, women shouldn't wear pants? It does say it, it, but it's but understand it says the Quran only recites the Bible. You got to do some history if you're gonna be into something. You got to learn the history behind. It. So now this is this is why this is why. Oh, okay, okay. All right, but the, but understand the Quran doesn't give us prophecies concerning our people. That's all we have to do this first you try to read it. No, Proverbs three thirty one. we read about our history? Where in the Quran can we read about solutions? Yeah, show it to me. Prove all things. Prove all things. Prove all things. Prove all things. My sister, but this is what you're into. You're into the Quran. You should be able to go into your book and show me contrary wise if that was the case. Proverbs 331, sis. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. The Bible says, sis, don't envy your oppressor. Who taught you to perm your hair? Me. Sis, so you mean to tell me that when you were born, you woke up and said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straighten my hair. Is that what you said at five years old, or did your mother do it to you? And, okay, so then where did your mother learn to perm her hair? I just probably saw her co-worker. The Bible. The Bible said, what? Envy thou not the oppressor. We learned to perm our hair, to dye our hair, to shave off our hair, to shave off our beards from our oppressors. Okay. The Bible said, envy not the oppressor. You know who taught us the Quran? No. Okay, let's deal with those I things. Okay, Joel chapter 3. Who taught blacks and Hispanics the Quran? Let's deal with it. The Arabs taught us that. When? In the, in the sub-Saharan slave trade. We were their slaves at one point in time. And guess what? We're still slaves in those countries today. So you have to understand, sis, the Quran is not for us. Our oppressors taught us these things. I have observed it as well as the Bible. I have observed it. Okay. But I'm understand. Okay. Understand. Joel, chapter 3, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Yeah, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coast of Palestine? So, sorry, verse 2 one more time. That we're, what we're reading right here in Joel chapter 3 is prophecy. Something that we're not going to read in the book of the Quran. So what we're reading here is how the African nations sold our people to the Arabs. For what though? Read. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land and they have cast lots for my people. So they've cast lots for our people. You know what it means to cast lots for someone? To, to bid on them. Give me a hundred dollars here for this nigga. Give me two hundred dollars here for that nigga. That's bidding. That's casting lots. That's what they did with us during slavery. And guess what? They did that with us on Wall Street. This is history that we don't know. So the Bible says the truth shall set you free. Right. You have to know where you've been in order for you to get to where you're going, sis. Right. Okay. Read on. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot. And have given a boy for a harlot. They sold our young men to be breeders. Read. And so the girl for wine that they might drink. And so the girl for wine that they may rape her, have sex with her. Read on. Yay. So sis, what you're learning is, 
We have to return back to our true image, our natural image. The honor of being dark skinned, of having woolly hair. Why? Because that's the hair that Christ had. Christ had the woolly hair. It's not nigger hair, it's what the scripture calls it, woolly hair. Get John chapter 3 verse 3. Sis, according to the Bible, the Bible's teaching us that we're the Israelites. The Bible teaches us what true beauty is. Earlier today, we were teaching, according to the Bible, that Christ looks like you. That Christ has dark skin. That Christ had woolly hair. But what happened to a lot of our sisters? Have you ever seen the documentary Good Hair by Chris Rock? Have you ever seen that documentary, Good Hair by Chris Rock? He goes over that the weave industry is a billion dollar industry. Right. And that a lot of East Indian women shave their head bald, offer the hair to gods, fake gods, and then the leaders of that country take it and turn it into a business to sell over here. And guess what? Look at this. I want to show you something. Read John 3 and 3. John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So part of being born again is returning to our culture, returning to our true image. Hosea 3 and 4. Our images, we're the Israelites. We have to walk like the Israelites. That means go back to that Afro. That means go back to that Afro. See, you, you smiling because you remember those days. You remember those days. Says, let me ask you a question. When did a lot of black women start perming their hair? When did that start? When did you see it? 70s. The 70s, 80s, 70s, 80s. 80s, 80s. 80s was Jericho. Okay. So look, look at this. Read this again. Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image. And without a what? An image. And without a what? An image. A lot of our sisters perm their hair because they forgot their true image. Right. A lot of our women forgot their true image. Hey. Guess what? 1 Corinthians 11. No problem. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 8, I believe. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. The Bible says that woman was made in man's image. Woman was made in man's image. So the woman is in the image of the man. The woman is in the image of her husband. According to the Bible, sis, it's not allowed to interracially marry. According to the Bible, it is a sin for a black woman to marry an Arab man. It is a sin for a black woman to marry a Caucasian man. It is a sin for a black man to marry a white woman. The Bible says that's sin. That's why, guess what? One of my co-workers told me when he married an East Indian woman and went home, the parents disowned their daughter and said, don't ever bring no nigga to my house. Tobit chapter 4 verse 12. When we marry outside our race, according to the Bible, it means we hate our race. That's what the Bible teaches us. Sis, you married? Oh, pray. You married to a brother? Oh, praises. There we go. Uh, read this, Toba 4 12. Toba chapter 4 verse 12. Hey, you smiled when you said it. All praises. Toba 4 and 12. Beware of all whoredom, my son. The Bible says to beware of whoredom. To beware of whoredom. Now it's going to explain this kind of whoredom. Come on. And chiefly, take a wife of the seed of thy father. It says take a wife of the children of your fathers. Come on. And take not a strange woman to wife. It says don't take a strange woman to wife. Come on. Which is not of thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets. 
The Bible says that blacks and Hispanics, we are the children of the prophets. Right. Come on. Right. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even they, all married wives of their own kindred. They all married wives of their own kindred. So why do black women step outside their race? Because they want to leave oppression. They want to feel like they made it. No, you didn't make it. You far from making it. Read on. And were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. So now, what is the Bible showing us? That these are laws we have to keep. These are laws we have to keep. Give me now oppression. First give me Matthew 121. You coming right back up. Matthew 121. The Bible teaches us, sister, that according to the Bible, we are the children of the prophets. We're the people that's oppressed. And Christ came to redeem us. Listen. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins for he shall save his people from their sins Shalom This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events music and classroom lessons IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org